John 8, 15 reads, Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, this is Jesus speaking, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. And again, I, I'm, I'm going a little bit out of order here. Forgive me. I'm a little bit tired this afternoon. <laughs> We're covering the point of your testimony being, you know, not just your action. We started off with your actions. Now we're going back to being your words, right? And uh, even in the law of God, your testimony, testimony of two men, that's how you determine what is the truth. So if you're going to convict somebody of a crime, it's going to take their testimony, what they testify, what they say to be true as being true. Um, your word is your testimony. You need to hold that true. Uh, you're in Acts chapter 14. Look at verse number one. The Bible reads, And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. So just so you understand what's going on in this story up to this point, uh, the disciples are doing a lot of great work. Um, they're getting a lot of people saved. Verse 1 says that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also the Greeks, believed. So they're out preaching the gospel, and they're, they're getting a lot of converts, right? But the unbelieving Jews, similar to the unbelieving Jews that crucified Jesus, the one that hated him, the one that, that wanted to kill him, they're stirring up the other Gentiles, the other unbelievers that are there. They're trying to, to, to stop this work that's being done, so they're stirring up the Gentiles, and they're making their minds evil affected against the brethren. So what are they doing? They're probably going around lying about them, right? Spreading rumors, saying, oh man, these guys that are coming here, don't listen to them, but you know, and just saying whatever to make their mind evil affected against people. And you know, it's not that hard to do. All you got to do is bring up some false railing accusation against somebody, oftentimes, and that's enough to get people's minds evil affected against someone else. But look at what happens here in verse 3. Long time therefore abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord. So they didn't let that stop them. The disciples here, hey, they're having great success. They're converting Jews and Gentiles alike. And they speak boldly, it says here, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. So they're speaking boldly in the Lord. They're not backing down in the face of opposition. That gives a testimony unto the word of grace. When you can withstand the oppression, when you withstand the persecution, when you can still stand and boldly preach in the face of all that persecution, that alone gives testimony unto the power of the Word of God. And because they did that, because they showed their unwavering, God added to that and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. If they would have backed down, though, guess what? They wouldn't have had the, the, the granting of the signs and wonders. The fact that they were already giving the testimony unto the Word, God just added on top of that, even further showing the power of God through these people, through the miracles they allowed them to do, because they didn't back down and were already testifying to the word of grace. 